that's right. We're right here, Sharp Facets Gallery this afternoon. My goodness, it's been a busy day. We were at the job fair this morning. We've been busy at the gallery. I don't know, a little rain makes everybody want to sell some gold and buy some gold. I just love it. <laughs> and this afternoon, we do have Aileen Barnes from Faith Home. Aileen, you are an icon in this community. You have been here for so, so many years. Uh, what were we just talking about? 1967 is when you first started, 66? Wow. And uh, here you are today, and you're still doing the same thing except expanding it. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. I guess they actually call you, don't they call you Mama Barnes? Most everybody. Does. Most everybody does. <laughs> Well, I, I, Aileen, I, you know, I know that uh, this is close to your heart, and of course one of the reasons we had you on is because it is um, Recovery Month. And what does Recovery Month mean uh, to you as far as with all the residents that you've seen and everything coming through Faith Home? I, I look at each one as a miracle. When you see them walk in the door, broken, hopelessness in the eyes, then you see them begin to come out of that and begin to live again. My husband used to say, you see in their eyes a sparkle he called sardust. Yeah. It's just amazing to see the change in uh, individuals that's been addicted so long and their health is gone and um, just pitiful looking. And then in a few weeks after they get to faith home, they began to have a desire to live. They began to feel that there's somebody and began to think more of themselves. Most of them have low esteem of themselves and feel full of guilt. Sure. So to me, to recovery to me is a miracle from God. Absolutely. Well, um, you know, the, the idea of Recovery Month, um, that's the 24th year of Recovery Month. What do you think um, started Recovery Month? Why did they start it? I think society had to be educated uh, to what uh, recovery is all about. There was a, when we first started, there was a great stigma to alcoholism mm -hmm. and drug addiction. And that's why I think it took so long to get started because of that stigma. But um, then we began to be have education in schools about alcoholism being a disease. And so I really think that being the public being educated to the fact that it's not it's not just um, um, habit, right. but a disease. So a disease. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I guess how, how you started back in 66. When did you actually put the first dorm up? First dorm went up, uh, we opened the doors in August, the, in August of 1971. And what made you decide, you and your husband, to, to do something like this? I mean, that was very innovative when you consider the times and everything. My husband, had, in his younger days, was addicted to alcohol. And when he found his sobriety, he became a minister, but he, did, he didn't ever feel called to the pulpit of the mm -hmm. church. He always said, I want to help people like I was. So that's, that's really how the dream and the vision it came for. But there's one other guy that worked with him, Rex McCrae, local man. The two of them got together and decided we needed a place here in, in Greenwood to uh, help people like that. Well, that had to be an expensive undertaking. I mean, to do something like that, wasn't it? We started out with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, and being in business myself, I know nothing comes for free here. <laughs> so what, what happened, uh, they started uh, having fundraisers, uh, all kind of things, you know, uh, racing and Anything. Racing. Now, yeah. what kind of racing were we talking about? Car, car racing. Mm -hmm. Faith home car racing. I like that one now. <laughs> Out at the stockyard or some of the stock car racing? Any way to have to raise some money. And that's the way we got our start. It took us five years 
to raise fourteen hundred dollars. Five <laughs> years. Fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. Okay. Five years. And after the. Now that's a commitment to uh, to to something to you know because but of course that was what 1966 67 in that area right. I mean that would be right. a little bit different dollars than what it would take today oh yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes um, you, it's, it's amazing what our budget is today than what it started out years ago I can I look back sometime at some of the old bills receipts <laughs> that we have like. Uh, Groceries, you know, right. everything just has rocketed, you know, just skyrocketed over the years. So, there again, it's a, it's a miracle. It is a miracle. Now, um, is Faith Home get uh, state or federal funding? No. We accept oh, okay. no federal or state funding. Um, the Christian, we, have, we can have Christian on our signs out in front, you know. All of our funding comes from um, the United Way agency, and we have uh, go church budgets. Uh, we go, uh, we take, we have some foundations that support a few, mm -hmm. and then we encourage the residents that come through the home when they get back on their feet to, you know, to start support. supporting. It. And a lot of them do. Now, I think it would be interesting to know, since you opened your first doors in 1971, do you have any idea how many people have come through your doors? We, we ride at 30,000. Wow. Right that's, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so many of them have, they're, they're still doing well, if they're still alive. A lot, sure. of, them, a lot of them's gone now, but we have some long-term uh, folks that's got, you know, sobriety. And the beauty of it, Anne, is that they go out and try to help us. So it's, you know, it's a sort of a chain reaction. Sure. We see families put back together that will split us up. We hear little girls come in and say, thank you for giving me my daddy back. Man, that, that doesn't melt your heart, nothing. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it, it, you know, we're going to be talking about Faith Home. Uh, there is a lot of different aspects to it. Plus, uh, you now have what three locations? We do. We uh, start out here, of course, with 14 beds. Mm -hmm. Now we have 56 beds. We're about to build another building, which will take place of two mobile homes that we've used for years. Mm -hmm. Well used. Okay. So it will. Uh, take the place of those plus we're planning to add about 10 beds wow. and it's going to be a beautiful bit of structure it really is um you got the money to build this place no <laughs> we're raising it you're raising it okay i understand that's where faith comes in. <laughs> that's why it's called faith home that's right. right there you go that's right. hey i'm here with aileen barnes from faith home she is a trooper still doing this today and uh doesn't look like she's going to slow down anytime soon i certainly hope you'll stay right here with us on wcrs i am ann eller we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors and we'll be back hey if you've got a question for aileen give us a call 229-7984 that's 229-7984 don't you go away oh that's right we're right back here sharp facets gallery i am here with aileen barnes and i tell you what we're talking about faith home now just out of curiosity um Faith Home. And, and did you like the idea when, you know, back when uh, your husband and uh, the other gentleman started working on this, did you say, wow, I'm in, or were you like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I was in. You were in? <laughs> yeah, because I got, I, I felt a calling on my life just, just like my husband. So I've been right beside him all the way. Did you know your husband when he, when he had, was... Our first, our first nine years, my marriage was addiction. Wow. So that gave you a real inside view then, right. yes. Plus, I had parents, I had uh, members of families that had problems. You know, it is amazing how it, it, it can be a family from generation to generation, isn't it? It is. And, uh, of course, I guess what they found is that there's actually a gene or something, isn't there, that has an effect to make somebody an addicted Person. I believe that. I yeah. really do. I sure do. That's one reason I never 
tried it because I was so afraid. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I do understand that. So, um, Faith Home, you came up with the name. How did you come up with the name? We had a committee that was working on it before we ever started building, of course, and um, we had to have that information to get started. <clears throat> but um, they came up, they had about different, five or six different names, and so we just sort of narrowed it down to Faith Home and stuff. It's all about the lighthouse, and it's all about the uh, house of love, all kinds of different sure. things. But we operating on faith from the very day one. <laughs> With we no didn't. money. Yes, okay, that, I understand. That's a good name. <laughs> <It's not quite laughs> But um, now, I, Aileen, just out, just out of curiosity, you have three places, and you and I were talking about um, off the air, that you allow somebody to come in for two months and there's absolutely no cost. That's true. So um, what does somebody have to do? These aren't all local people that come. Don't people come from all over? From all over. Of course, we cater to our uh, local first. Sure. You know. But uh, we take them, we've had them from even overseas. Really? I mean, we have a website, they read that website, and they, we've had several from overseas. Wow. Um, we've had them from Texas, Mexico, you name it, we've had them. That's unbelievable. So what is it, what, what does, when somebody um, checks in, comes to stay with your program there, what do they, what do they go through? What happens? Well, we have a really extensive uh, program. We keep them busy. Um, they get up in the, in the morning, early. What's early? Early, it's like <laughs> 6.30. 6.30, okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's my time. Okay, good. <laughs> and, and, of course, have breakfast at uh, 7. Mm -hmm. And then, then they start the day with the devotion. We have people from the community to come in and share with them. Um, then they, we have what we call work therapies, not work. We'd all be known as a work farm. It's therapy. <laughs> That's an interesting choice of words, Aileen. You know, uh, yes, uh, work. We're calling it therapy today. That's right. Okay. That's right. What type of things? Uh, because it is a, it is like a farm, isn't it? But we do have them. We have a garden. Uh, we have. Uh, they do the yard work. They do the housework. They, we have someone in the. We have five, I think, in the kitchen. We have a chef on staff, and then he has. Uh, he has, you know, guys under him. Uh, we have a maintenance crew. We have a warehouse crew. So, so when you're taking people in for this, do you look at their background and go, yeah, we need someone we like you? <laughs> we try to do that. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. We try to give them what they like to do. Sure. If we can. Sure. Well, I mean, and I'm sure you're trying to make a fit. And it's, it's discipline. They, when they come in, there's no structure in their life. They just got completely away from structure, so we we work on that, mm -hmm. get some structure back in their life, and um, building on that, you know. And it's amazing. It is amazing to see when they come in and when they leave. Now, if somebody comes in though, and they're alcohol addicted or uh, drug addicted, do you take somebody who is just had their last drink before they came in the door, or how, how do people have, come into the organization? They have to have 72 hours without anything. We do not let them have any kind of medication other than life threatening, like blood pressure, heart, things like that. But they have no kind of a medication hmm. uh, at all. Okay. Well, I just wondered because sometimes, I mean, when somebody is detoxing or whatever, that can be a very difficult time to have to take them in. They have to be detoxed when they come to us okay. because we're not medical. Right. And uh, we have had them to come in sometimes, you know, late, sometimes things happen later mm -hmm. that you are not anticipating, but we try to get them to a doctor and get them the help they need, but it's too bad we have to send them all. Okay. So, so we work at you work in this program. Uh, they they work at jobs and everything. What other parts are there as far as what what makes Faith Home special? What makes Faith Home work? I think the home atmosphere has a lot to do with that. Uh, we don't when it was 
in the beginning, the birthing of it. My husband especially said, I, we don't want to have an institutional uh, environment. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have a, a hospital environment. We want to be a home away from home. And so that we try to make that happen. Um, the facility itself, I mean, the way, the way it's outlined and the furnishing is just very home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, um, there's a lot of love out there. A lot of love. Uh, that's think, I think that's one of the growing cards right there is just the fact that, I, that's what I've been told, so you just feel love when you walk in there. You know, I, and, and I presume you probably do some group conversations, group talking, group working together. We do. And the faith home out here, though, but it is an all-male group there, is that correct? And yeah. you have a, a yeah. the one here in Greenwood? Here in Greenwood and also the one in Spartanburg County mm -hmm. is male. Um, the, we have 22 males in, in Spartanburg. The latest facility is in Abbeville. You okay. have twenty two ladies over there. Okay. What's the how big is uh how big is Greenwood facility? We have fifty six beds. Fifty six beds. Right. And yeah. we will plan on adding about ten or so. Do you have a size that you think that if you got beyond that would not be good? I think we're about to reach that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I understand. That. That's why we got three facilities, you know, is you can't get too large and you can lose the identity, you don't have that closeness. Back when we started, there were 14 beds and everybody knew one another. Sure. But now, it's, it's hard for me, because I'm getting older, but it's hard, hard for me to even learn the name, you know. Yeah, but you're still mama. I'm still mama. Well, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like a mama. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have children of your own? I have two daughters. You have two daughters. Yeah. And have more grandson, uh, children, number of great grandson. Wow. So the mama suits me fine. Suits you fine. And I didn't teach them that. That's just something they picked up on the way. Now you have ones I know that have been special and have stayed on and continued to work at uh, at Faith Home and have made a. I want to say a career, really. Mm -hmm. Yes? Partly, yes. And it gives them a chance to build on their a sobriety, to build on a foundation. If they stay on the staff there, I have, I have a man there that's been there almost it's 13 years, going into 14 years. Um, then, you know, I have some that's been there three years. Uh, but that's, that's the way I, our staff functions. Sure. All, all our residents has to all our staff, excuse me, has to come through the residence. So they have to have been part of the program, and so they understand the program. Right. And I ask, when I hire one, I ask for a year commitment. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that don't mean they got to leave in a year. If they're doing the job right and, and everything, they can stay as long as we need them, or they sure. need to. But uh, I do ask for that year commitment. Absolutely. Well, I think everybody knows about the Faith Home barbecues, and you've got a golf tournament, and there's a whole lot going on out there at Faith Home. And we are going to now hear a South Carolina news and a word from our sponsors, but we'll be back, so don't you go away. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. I am Ann Eller, and we are talking with Aileen Barnes this afternoon. And they they, they do a, a, a lot of a lot of great things out there, but it does take money to do these things. You know, we were talking about raising fourteen thousand dollars back in sixty seven, sixty eight, that time frame. What kind of a budget do you have today? Over, I mean, it has to be uh, phenomenal for the number of people. And they're staying two months at a time, no charge. We're right at a million dollars a year. That's a huge budget. It is. 
and that's a lot of people to, uh, to take care of and uh, make everything come together. And it's getting harder by the day. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet Not it this is. day in time. You know, it's, it's hard right now. Well, it is hard. It's been a hard for uh, nonprofits because of uh, there hasn't been the free flow of money right. out there. Exactly. exactly. People can't give if they don't have it. Exactly. Well, and a lot of organizations have really hurt. So for the very fact that you're able to continue and to build a, uh, another dorm out there, that's pretty terrific. Now, when someone comes to live out there, you talk about the dorms. What type of living arrangement is it? Very simple. Uh, each, each bedroom for the residents has two beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have to keep it clean. Um, they do the work themselves, and um, they have a sitting room for TV. Mm -hmm. um, they have activities that they can do outside, you know, like we have volleyball and basketball and things like that. And they have a weight room that they go down and work out if they like to. Um, but it's just very simple. Very simple. Mm -hmm. But two people in a room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got all these activities. Now, how much property is actually with the place out right here in Greenwood? 67 acres. 67 acres. Mm -hmm. That's a good sized piece of property. Yes, it is. And we're right on the end, edge of it, and we've got a lot of room behind, you know, back of us, but uh, everything seems to be on the line there. <laughs> on the front right side. Right now. Yeah. You know. But uh, there's room if we, in the future if we see a need or see that we can uh, progress to something. That, like having a safe house to bring them to, I'd love to ha have that happen. Um, we need, because they can't come into our program 72 hours. Right. And that 72 hours seems like forever for them out there struggling to stay so. Sure. And that's one of the hardest things you, you, you can do when you, you know, when you're addicted like that. Well, how do you know they do take 72 hours and that they are sober when they come in or not a, not having taken any drugs or anything? We drug test them. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then this is serious, Aileen. It's serious business. It's you know. serious business. Yeah. Okay. Drug test So um, what type of, uh, you know, everybody knows about the uh, barbecue. You have the barbecue every year. You were telling me about doing a program Christmas in July. What can you tell us about that? Well, I, I love Christmas time. <laughs> I saw a child at Christmas time, but it's just beautiful. I mean, have in July you have Christmas atmosphere. Okay. Know? And the the love day. I think you know Christmas time. There's more love shown than any other time. Seeming. Yeah. And there's just so much joy and love and. Um, it's just great. Uh, I wish everybody could be a part of it, and uh, it's growing. This is a, we've had it three years, and it's just we were the first to start anything like that around here, and it's it's just growing leaps and bounds. So, what exactly do you do now? You have it out at Northside Church. That's uh, up until this point, we have had the, the family uh, building there. They're gracious to us and let us have that. Um, we uh. We have sponsors that sponsor tables, mm -hmm. and they'll come in and decorate the table. Uh, then we have judges to come in and judge those tables. Oh, so all the de decorations and whatnot? Yeah. Yes. And it's amazing to see those tables. <laughs> They're beautiful. And um, and that's just volunteers coming in that wants to be a part of, of the ministry, you know. But now they take that table but I uh, decorate very serious. Very seriously. Very serious. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens to the table decorations in the end? Do y'all keep them or what happens? We keep them. We okay. Take, we have to take them down that the night of the dinner. Sure. And then so we have to pack them up and bring them back out Christmas time and we start decorating out at home on the campus out there in October. Well that's right around the corner at least. Right. We already started pulling that stuff. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how much earlier Christmas keeps coming every year? I mean, it's still on the 25th of December, but we start so much earlier. You mean, if you've been to Cracker Barrel, they're already decorated. Oh, yes. Well, the reason we start in October, we don't turn the lights on, but we have that place out there looks like a little city out there. 
with the lights. Mm -hmm. So they hang the lights, and it takes right on up to Thanksgiving. And what I like to do is to get it, the lights all ready, trees decorated, but not on. Mm -hmm. And we have, I, I don't like to push uh, Thanksgiving out. Okay, I agree so, with you on that. That's I, a shame that yes, Thanksgiving yes, is, is getting by the wayside right. here. So we don't turn lights on, we just have them ready to turn on. And on, on Thanksgiving night, we have a, a dinner, and we have, um, we get through with our th Thanksgiving, and while they're cleaning up and getting ready for a meeting, we have a sh time of sharing. Going to, I think one of the greatest meetings you have of the year. People get up and give their uh, Thanksgiving uh, for what God's done in their life. We have people just not even addicted that loves to come to our program. And while they're uh, getting ready for that, they turn the lights on. And I said, now you can go out and look at the lights. So we don't rush it, you know, we just get it, get it ready. Okay, so can people come out and look at the lights anytime? Anytime. I wish right. more of them come. Well, beautiful. see, I didn't even know about this, it's and beautiful. here I am, and I'm always talking about where are the good light displays, and now I know where one is. Beautiful out there. That's great. We'll be have to uh, come out and check that one out. So uh, you do Christmas in July. Now, I presume that is a fundraiser. Yes, people is. pay to come to this event. Well, they, yeah, we have tickets. We sell for the dinner, mm -hmm. and what it is, uh, the sponsors of that table, they pay a price, mm -hmm. and then they can either they invite people to sit at that table, mm -hmm. um, and they can sell the tickets or whatever. Okay, and uh, that's what we raise. Sure. Do you have any Christmas presents at this thing? I just need to know. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> All right, we are here with Aileen Barnes. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the other things. You know, they also have a resale shop or two. I'm not sure, but I know they go have at least one. We're going to talk about that and some of the other events coming up. It is Faith Home, and one thing that uh, we want to make sure that anybody that could use this help uh, would get this help. It is September. It is Recovery Month. And um, if you have somebody in your life that needs some help, you might want to check out Faith Home. Hey, I am Ann Eller right here with you on WCRS right here in Greenwood, South Carolina. Let's hear a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. Now, Aileen, you know, one of the things that um, um, occurred to me, you have people there for roughly two months. Um, now, do you work with AA or any of these other recovery groups? Uh, because when people go leave your facility, I presume they may need some help, support. We, we recommend it. We don't try to force them because that's something they have to want. Right. Uh, but we do recommend it because it's a great program. Sure. And uh, helps a lot of people. But it's anonymous, and so that would be up to the you know, residents if they choose to do that. But we highly recommend. Now, um, there are, of course, a lot of other organizations that have gotten into recovery, helping people with recovery, too. Like Celebrate Recovery, there's still a lot of churches today. Sure. And um, different, different groups like that, you know. But the churches have become more educated to the, what it's all about. And, and now I celebrate recovery. That covers all kind of addictions. All, all kinds. All kinds. All kinds. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not saying anything right now, but all kinds. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, though, too, you know, people, people, uh, as we progress today, and as you look back, back in 1966, 67, you opened the first facility in 71. Did you ever think that you would? number one, still be doing this, and number two, that it would ever become what it has become? No, I had no idea. I really did not. I, um, I never would have thought I'd be a director at a place like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had all kind of positions out there, but uh, God put me there. It's just as sure as he put my husband there. Sure. And my husband was he educated me. He he trained me, not telling me what it was 
all about, you know. But one day, he, after he was, got a little sick, before I had to put him in the hospital, he said, you know, Aileen, you could do this. And you said, oh, no, I couldn't. I certainly did. <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, yes, you could. And he said, these, these guys respect you, and you could probably get more out of them than I can. <laughs> And I still couldn't imagine me doing that. But when he got sick and away from us, then it was obvious that I was, I was the one that was supposed to take it, take it over. And I, I have not regretted one bit of time. Not one minute have I, have I regretted it. Have you ever said, yeah, so you've never said to yourself, God, why am I here? Why am I not off uh, doing something fun or something? Yeah, the flesh gets in the way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> yes, I mean, even when we have passions and we love stuff, right. we like to get away every once in a while. That's true. Do you ever take a vacation? I just got back off of one. You did? <laughs> okay. Well, where'd you go? Florida. Florida? Well, that's nice. Bernardino Beach. Oh, very nice. We, we go with family down there? Or? Yeah. Well, no, we just, family goes down there. And uh, we've been doing that now for about seven, eight years. Now, when my husband's alive, he was out of North Carolina. We always went to North Carolina to the beaches. But after he passed away, we started going to Florida. We do have some acquaintances down there, no, no family. And it's a beautiful beach. So how long do you go on vacation for? I don't go on as many as I should. Okay, <laughs> but how long did you go on for this one? Uh, we left on Saturday, kind of on Thursday. I can't stand up. <laughs> I can't stay away from See, long. now that's what I was getting at. It's really just a long weekend, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay. In fact, I'm supposed to take four vacations a year, and I, I, I think I've taken uh, one and a half. One and a half? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely I do. I mean, I, I don't think I've had a vacation this year, or <laughs> last year, or the year before. But you know what? When you have a passion, it's, uh, it's not hard to, uh, to stay with it, is it? It's hard to stay away from. Exactly, it is. So, um, what else do we have coming up? I understand we have a golf tournament coming up the end of the end of October. Yes, and that's our last fundraiser for the year. Okay. But we do have. Uh, I think we have. Let's see, we have the golf in. Well, let's go back to the first of the year. May we have our um, annual uh, barbecue? Uh, that's, that's a biggie. That's a big. Yeah. How long does it take you to get ready for that barbecue? About two weeks. Two weeks? Or longer. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, it takes longer than that because we have to get our mailing out. But actually, hard work, mm -hmm. at least two weeks. Well. And the last week is sleepless nights. Sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We work day and night trying to get Now, does week. everybody get involved in helping with that that's out there at mm -hmm. Faith Home? We all do. Yes. And even have some people coming out there and helping us that have been through the home. Okay. We make fun out of it, but it is hard work. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have that in May, and then what else do we have? Uh, Christmas in July. We have Christmas in July, and then uh, October. We have three major fundraisers. Fund and of course, we have our stores. That that's where our, a lot of our income, most of our income comes from. Now, how do the stores work? It's, it's things that people have contributed to us, like, you know, things that they don't want anymore. Uh, we have some a lot of nice stuff that comes in, out there. Uh, you know, people losing loved ones and empty houses. And we have pickups, so, you know, we have trucks that run and pick up all the time. So, And clothes, we have all kind of clothes. And we don't waste that there. If we can't if the clothes don't sell, mm -hmm. or if they've been out too long and, and no one seems to want them, we turn those into rags. We sell rags, and that's a, a you'd be surprised how much you can get out of that. Rags. Selling rags? That's right. It goes to the rag bin. Okay. Uh, if they not, you know, so we don't take even rags because that makes money too. That's unbelievable. And, we, we, and you also have all the people that are re uh, residents also work in the stores, correct? We ha that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that work? Do they get paid, or do, uh, how, have, do you, how do you work that? We have 29 staff members for the three facilities. Okay. And they have a 
low pay. Right. Because that's a part of the, you know, living out there. As far as income, it doesn't seem that much, but when you don't have no overhead expense, it can add up. But, sure. Uh, they, we furnish everything they want, clothes if they want it, uh, of course their food, and, uh, but they, we, we pay very, very low amount. <laughs> well, we just can't afford the Sure, I understand, I understand. I just wondered how it worked. So um, you have the stores that are a constant generator. Now, how many stores do you have? We have six. Six stores. That's with the one at the warehouse. So you now actually have opened up a place at Faith Home that's where the warehouse. Now, most of the time the stuff comes into the warehouse and then is dispersed out. But That's, that's true. That's really the drop-off area, especially for large items like furniture. Um, then we have trucks running to pick up, you know. Um, then they some that drop off most of the clothes at the uh, stores, stores, and they you know sell from there. But we we rather they would drop off it. I drop off there so we'll know what's coming in because we like to acknowledge all of our Donation. contributions. We want people to know that we appreciate what they're doing. You know? And I guess they would get they could get a tax donation. It's tax deductible. Yes. So oh, that's pretty terrific. You know, if you'd like to call Faith Home for more information, you can call them 223-0694. That's 223-0694. And if you want more information about Faith Home, you can also check out their website, faithhomegwd.net. That's faithhomegwd.net. You know, um, Aileen, you know, as we're getting ready to, to finish here, what would you say to somebody that may be listening or a family member that may be uh, sitting there going that they know dad or mom or sister or brother ha has an issue? How should someone proceed? It has to be, they have to be willing to come because we don't, we don't have lockups out there. We don't have any bars. We don't have any fences. It's home away from home, as I said earlier. Uh, if they can, uh, the loved ones can talk to them about coming in and they're willing to come, um, they call, they get on a, what, what we call a waiting list because we have a long waiting list, long. And, <clears throat> but we put them on there and of course, as I said earlier, Greenwood, Abbeville, and Spartanburg, we have the, they have the first chance because that's where most of our income comes from. Sure. But, uh, they go down that list, and if and if they come and they're not ready to come in, some of them show up. They're dirty. Well, I mean, you know, with not been sober. Right. Uh, they have to go back, and um, they'll give them a couple of days, whatever it takes, to get straightened out and come back. Uh, they have to call in every day if they get on our waiting list. Mm -hmm. They fill out our application. And they can get, they can fill it out over the phone or mail it. Sure. But uh, we go by that, and uh, if they get on that list, they have to call every morning, I mean every day. Right. And uh, that lets us know that they're serious. serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, they, if they miss over three days, then they have taken from that list and dropped, either put it at the bottom of the list or dropped off the list. Sure. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes they're pressured into it and they don't want to come. And then there's, there's times that they get to thinking about it and decide not to come. And um, so it's, it is voluntary. But we sometimes are under pressure from mom, dad, loved ones, uh, or even some of their uh, boss, you know, sure. where they're working. Um, you either go or somewhere and get some help or not. Sure. Yeah. And so that's, that's the way it works. Absolutely. Well, uh, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Aileen, it's been too long since we've sat down and chatted. It certainly has been nice to have you on the show. And uh, God bless, and I certainly hope you're able to take it to the next level here and still keep that homey uh, atmosphere that uh, is so important. Thank you so much, and I enjoyed being here.
Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for us. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody. I'll be back in the morning. And don't forget, Super Networking tomorrow evening. Bye-bye, everybody.